Footscray had managed only the one goal that was kicked in the second term. They trailed by eight points, 2-4 to Footscray, 1-2. So let's now go straight to the action and we pick up play of the third quarter. Third quarter from the Western Oval. Essendon leading by eight points in a very low scoring affair. After they held Footscray goalers in the opening term, the Bulldogs threw McGuinness go forward. Kennedy, who was taken off the ground in the second quarter, tackled by Walsh, arguably high, and Rick Kennedy would get the free kick. Might be a little bit too far out to score. And in fact, that proved to be the case. Salmon, who kicked an excellent goal in the first quarter, O'Donnell to Watson. Defences of both sides have been very solid and typified by that mark by Michael Ford. He's played well, Peter. He has played well, hasn't he? Not uh, let anything go past at all. Ford, almost at the centre circle. Cullen. No, there's a push out there. Got straight in the back of David Grenville with both hands. Umpire in great position to see that too. Grenville's kick to centre wing. Knocked away by Ford again. Hanabry's kick is short and towards the boundary line. Davies tries to get it to the running McGuinness. He got scragged. O'Donnell carts it over the line. And it'll be a throw in at Footscray's right half forward flank. But about 65 to 70 metres out from goal. Bulldogs need a couple of goals quickly. Be very handy under these conditions. But getting them might be just a little hard. Cullen on the bottom of it again. Grabbed by Grenvold. And this time the umpire has given him the free kick. So and fair enough too. And after he gave one away, he gets one back. And Cullen, pretty good kick of the ball, up towards full forward. Goes out the back, O'Keefe and folds. Folds kick off the ground, O'Keefe in front. Flips it back. Royal, left foot shot by Royal. Rick Kennedy right on the line, takes it over the boundary line. So, boundary throw in the left forward pocket for the Bulldogs. Essendon interchange area. Paul Salmon doing the ruck work and is doing it pretty well too. Salmon, 12 kicks and four hand passes. Ten hit outs in the first half. Bailey attempted kick off the ground. Somehow gets himself through the traffic and the kick into half back has been marked by Walsh. So Essendon get out of that full back line pretty easily. Walsh's kick wide. Plane can't mark. Playing it along in front of himself. Hit the boundary and he hits the boundary umpire on the full. Does he get a stat for that? Actually, Steve Wallace has done a pretty good job on Bradley Plain. Boundary throw in between wing and half forward for Footscray on this member side. Salmon gets the tap out. Steve Wallace, short kick towards half forward. It's a vacant spot up there. Cullen, one against three, the Footscray player. And it goes over for another boundary throw in just outside 50 metres. So Essendon 2-4, lead Footscray 1-2, and the all-time low scores for both sides is 23 points for Footscray in 1989 this season, for Essendon in 1955, and they're really struggling to better those all-time lows. Spawn, kick around the corner, marked by Hanaberry. I don't think we've seen the great skills of Australian football here today, but the ground not contributing to that, and defences of both sides well on top. That's a good mark to Paul Sammer. And Foster limping after that exchange. That won't help, uh, help Footscray's cause. Gary Folds, who started on the bench. Terry Danaher. In a good first quarter. He's been pretty consistent right throughout the game so far. Knocked away by Wigney. Canterbury. Terry Wallace. Wallace from right centre wing. Short, down to half forward. Knocked away by Walsh. Picked up well. Rove be uh, beautifully, actually, by Cullen. Up towards O'Keefe, couldn't quite take the mark. Now here's a real chance. Royal, could he run a little bit further? He's got only one behind. Thought he might have been able to get a little closer, Ross. Yes, he may have been able to take a couple more steps, but he really jabbed at that to try and keep it low, low trajectory on the ground. Just pushed it far too much to the left. So Anthony Danaher to kick the ball back into play. Favours the outer side. Guy who can kick a football. At the back is Watson. Baxter drags him, comes out with the ball himself. That is a mile in the air. Thumped away by Danaher. That's Anthony Danaher. In front is Kennedy. No one to give the hand pass to. Effectively cornered and holding the ball. 
that not was just right. He's the only player going for the ball, but he made all the effort, didn't knock the ball out eventually, and he's penalised. Unbelievable, Ross, isn't it? He was Especially in these difficult conditions, oh, the umpires should chance. be a little bit more lenient. Again, it should be penalised if you're going to be consistent. And the Footscray fans are pretty excited about that because uh, they felt a bit hard done by with the Rick Kennedy free kick against that player just a few seconds ago. Foster kicks it to Cousins. Cousins at centre-half forward. Short pass is pretty good. The markers to O'Keefe. Yes, have to play that. Well within scoring distance. He's given them an interesting op option up there as uh, O'Keefe. Kennedy's come down to play almost on a half forward line, but a good kick coming from Cousins. It was spotted well by Foster initially. Good chance here for O'Keefe to score a goal. Philip O'Keefe is about 25, maybe 30 metres from goal when he kicks it. Kicking into the breeze, drop punt kick looks pretty good. Footscray second. Duckworth takes the free. Long in front. Not a mark, surely. Way on. Hogg. Gets assistance from Ford, who scoops it out wide, looking for McGuinness. McGuinness at half-back, tackled by Long a little late. Cousins, back to McGuinness. McGuinness at half-back, steadies. Left foot kick towards the centre wing. There's Terry Wallace again, where the ball bounces at the bottom of the pack. Cullen comes off to uh, Dean Wallace. He's held, but he didn't have it. Yes, yeah, so Terry Wallace in tackling. Wallace on that occasion knocked the ball out and then continued to hang on to Wallace and therefore the free kick given for holding the man. So with Wallace, Wallace and Wallace on the field it's a little <laughs> bit difficult here at the Western Oval. The chip pass finds Watson. Watson goes for the long bomb. It slews off the side of his boot. Good fortune for the Bombers. Finishes with O'Donnell. Plays on quickly. Poor marking there by Terry Wallace. And O'Donnell's kick finishes up with Spawn. Spawn's got a loose player at centre half forward and the mark goes to the veteran Terry Danaher. Terry Danaher about 50 metres from goal kicking with the aid of the breeze. Just a little bit of indecision there. Well, Kennedy marks his mark about a metre from the line and he knows where to run up to. Tries the torpedo punt kick doesn't come off Punch away now, Footscray. Can they break clear? Hannah Berry tries to punch it out to the advantage of Whitney. Stephen Clark beautifully tackled by Hogg. And the ball is over for boundary throw-in. Matthew Hogg appealing for the free kick. One point the difference at the Western Oval. Essendon leading 2-4 to 2-3. Madden and Cousins. Neither gets an effective tap out. Danner's shot is pretty close. And just shaves the post on the wrong side for one behind. One point, two five to two three. Wigney, number six, will be kicking the ball back into play. But I've been very impressed with uh, Footscray's defence today. They've played very tight, manned up, been very disciplined. It's a better performance all round, really, after their effort against the Eagles. That's a beautiful kick. And the mark taken by Doug Hawkins. Little chip pass. Steve Wallace takes the mark. Back to McGuinness. Hand pass effective to Terry Wallace. Back to Steve Wallace. And it's Spawn chipping in to Anderson. To Plain. Plain from the glue pot. Did well to get a kick at it. Madden in front. Juggles the mark. No, says the umpire. Bailey. Boot the ball pretty quickly. It's bouncing. It'll stop. Hogg. Well played, what a great sprint. Clark, Long and Hogg. Well, we had one like that yesterday. I think it was uh, Craig Bradley. Actually kicked a goal for Hawthorne. An own goal, as I mentioned. And we had another one there. But one behind, so the difference is now three points. 2-3 two, to 2-6 two, at the Western Oval. Essendon looking threatening at the moment. Especially when this fellow gets the ball. Tim Watson, long, high kick into the square, tall timber needed here, Clark almost the mark, or he almost grabbed it at the back of the pack, but another behind to Essendon to make the difference, four points. Well, they've had a few chances in the uh, last couple of moments, the Bombers, kicking uh, with the aid of the breeze, Ford kicks in, finds Hunter, Hunter plays on, 
Out towards half back, no mark. It comes out the back. Dean Wallace, sweeping hand pass to Anth uh, Terry Danaher, rather. In towards half forward, and a good mark. Is that 50 metres against Hogg? No. A good mark to Clark. Short pass into the pocket. Madden just got his hands underneath it and took a great mark for the big fellow. This is Stephen Clark coming off the ground for Essendon and going back on Andrew Manning. Now Simon Madden, after taking this fairly athletic mark, I thought, yes, Ross, there. Good mark for a big fellow. Distance, I wouldn't think it'd be a problem for Simon Madden. The angle is a little difficult. And a shocking kick off the side of his boot out of bounds on the full. Gee, you really would expect better. Another let off though for Footscray. You don't often see Simon no, miss uh, he really completely. Is a very I mean, accurate shot at goal. And it was a bad kick there. So the Bulldogs just clinging on. They'll have last use of the breeze in this match. For what it's worth, Ian. Well, I really think it's a distinct advantage. Surely the kicks, you can see there, they hold up in the breeze. That's only gone to the 50 metre line. Folds, Wigney. Hannah Berry will be crunched by Spawn, but Spawn did it pretty well, fairly knocks it over the ground, over the boundary line, and we'll have a throw in, it's about 60 metres around from the Essendon goal. Bombers leading by four points. Boundary throw in, right on 50, Bailey overruns the ball, applies a tackle which was arguably high, folds his kick out to Danaher in front, ball knocked away by Eppleston, long, tries the hand pass, oh, might be a free kick. For holding the man, no, says the umpire. Snapshot by Bailey, goes right across goal. Plain, good attempt to mark. Anderson, onto his left foot. Plenty of foot scrape players. Oh, high tackle, unnecessary. I think it was a little unintentional. What a great a, mark. A terrific mark. And what a oh. great chase by Doug Hawkins to put Anderson under pressure. 50 metres anyway. I'll tell you what, foot scrape don't need much it was more a, motivation, I don't think. This it was guy, accidental. He has just shown, shown unbelievable courage there, Matthew Hogg. So Hogg gets the 50 metre penalty. Got and another one. A few of those dished out today. And another one. Mm. Obviously not standing the mark correctly. Interesting. Umpire Stephen Luckman asserting his authority. And Hogg bleeding from the mouth, it looks like, after that exchange. The earlier one, anyway which we thought was, uh, well, it was accidental, that's a poor kick. Plain steps in and boots it up towards centre wing. Bailey loses his footing in the sand, that's too high as well. Not much doubt about that. And Hanabry this time will take the kick. Hanabry to half forward for Footscray. Is that a mark? Great effort. Yes, Kennedy. Yeah. Used his body well. Still inside the square. Dean Wallace has it punched away from him by Danaher. At the plane. Ooh. In danger. Kennedy. Salmon. Hasn't missed marks like that and marks in front of O'Keefe just inside the boundary line. He's played well today, Salmon. The umpire directing that he has to kick over the mark. Gary Folds had taken the mark. And I don't think was too pleased about the decision. So not really advantaging Essendon. Salmon to the outer side now. Hugs the boundary line. The end result's the same. It's still an Essendon mark. This time, Terry Danaher. Walsh. O'Donnell on the run at the right half back line. He gets distance with that kick. At the back is Bailey. Went up one handed. Hogg. Hawkins. Wigney. Right on the boundary line. Hugs the boundary line with the kick. Down now. Did McGinnis get it before it went over the line? Davies. Applies the tackle, which was illegal. That'll be holding the man going Essendon's way. And Gary O'Donnell will get the obvious free kick. Now Darren Davies not having a very good day for Footscray. O'Donnell coming up for his 14th possession. Davies only three. Kicking towards the centre and a great diving mark taken by Hanaberry. He's done pretty well. 15 possessions to Matthew Hanaberry. Up towards half forward, the mark taken by Foster. Foster. Transfers play back in towards centre half forward. Kennedy can't mark. The ball comes out with Plain, and Plain runs straight across centre half back, kicks it out towards the wing. Duckworth dispossessed pretty well by Ford. 
over the top, Baxter goes for goal, Baxter will it swing around, yes, to goal to Footscray, no it's not, it's touched right on the line by Salmon. Oh, you're the only guy that could have touched it Ian. Think you got a oh. bit of skin on that, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Six foot 19 or whatever he is, Paul Salmon. So <laughs> Essendon lead by three points. So at three quarter time, it was just three points the margin. Favouring Essendon, 2-7. They kicked only three behinds in the third quarter. 2-7 and they led Footscray who kicked one goal two to move to two goals four. Bearing in mind, of course, as we go into the final quarter, that Footscray earlier this year kicked their lowest ever score against the Bombers and that was 3-5-23. So I'm quite sure they would be very keen to get past that today. It all came down to the final quarter. Who was going to last? Could someone draw away? Let's now go back to our commentary team of Peter Landy, Ian Robertson and Ross Glendinning. It's the final quarter now from the Western Oval. Footscray and Essendon, the Bombers leading, but only by three points in a very low-scoring affair. They were held goalless, though, in the third term. Terry Danaher, ineffective hand pass. Back towards the circle it goes. It's not going very far. Finally booted away by Eppleston to half forward. Umpire calls play on. Hamilton does just that. Loses his strides as he kicks the ball. Free kick downfield. Umpire pays the advantage. Dean Wallace goes out very, very wide. And the ball out of bounds next to the interchange area on centre wing. And there's a box on. Kellett. Kellett. Dean Wallace. And Wallace. Boys well, will be boys. They're continuing. A little bit more interested in that than uh, some of the play we've seen. And they're still at it on the ground. A few other players come in to remonstrate. Duckworth grabs Kevin around the throat. And uh, that's Billy's bit. He sorted it out pretty quick. Play continues. Spawn from 50 metres. New ball. Should go close to scoring. Oh, it just bounces the wrong way. Oof. The late Jim Laker would have been proud of that. Peter, I'm surprised that uh, Michael Moghouse hasn't brought Simon Atkins back onto the ground. He's been a good player for them this year. They just need someone like that to run through the middle of the ground. Yes, he was taken off early. Unless he's injured, Ross. He didn't appear to be, but he could be, certainly. So Michael Ford to kick in. Four points the difference. Under these circumstances, I guess a pretty fair sort of a lead. O'Donnell fists it down. Picked up by Terry Wallace on the 50-metre line. He's given it to Darren Baxter. A high kick by that player. Up towards centre wing, and again, Paul Hamilton, this time with the strides on, takes the mark. Poor effort by Kennedy there, he should have really competed and made it difficult. Hamilton's kick in towards half forward, and a juggling mark taken by Simon Madden. The ageless veteran, Simon Madden's kick towards full forward. No mark. Now a chance for Duckworth. Duckworth shoots for goal, nearly an Essendon mark to Plain. Under pressure is Bradley Plain, only metres from their goal. Steve Wallace does the tackling for Footscray, and he's rewarded because Bradley Plain made no attempt whatsoever to move that ball on. 50 again, is it? Another 50 metre penalty, yep. Gee, we've had a few of those today, that's about half a dozen. Well, this should be just between the 50 metre line and the centre square, which is where it is, so... Eight 50 metre penalties we've had this afternoon. Steve Wallace, set a half back, come back and kick over the man on the mark. And that is being a little pedantic, I think, on behalf of the umpire. And Steve Wallace, that's set a half back for Footscray. Bulldogs trail by four points. Short kick, mark to Cousins. Now, Cousins usually kicks the ball pretty long. This time he elects to go in short. It's a poor effort. It's in the glue pot in the centre. McGuinness over the top finds Terry Wallace. Terry Wallace's high kick. Great mark to Hawkins. See, that was a difficult ball to mark too. Even when it goes so high and so wobbly, the sun's out. Greasy ball. And he'd be a chance from here, oh, also, yes. I think. Well, I'd back, if I was going to back someone, I'd certainly have to back Doug Hawkins to kick from there. And wouldn't the crowd go berserk? The hometown hero, a chance to put his beloved Bulldogs in front early in the last quarter the drop punt kick slews off the side still in play now it's not and we'll have a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for the Bulldogs this was out of bounds initially so right next to the behind post is the throw in Salmon and Kennedy oh it's won by Kennedy he's thumped it towards the goals and in fact 
Hutton succeeded in rushing it through for a so one point to Footscray making the difference three points 20 to 17 and of course these two teams battled out a very low scoring affair earlier in the year at Windy Hill Anthony Danaher everybody misjudges the flight of it Eppleston to Wigney Wigney on the right centre wing for Footscray Ford was calling for it at midfield he's ignored him and tried to go long backs to great mark in front of Duckworth good mark one of the renowned taggers in the game haven't been seen to good light this year but this fellow has played a good game Baxter not with that kick though Salmon who's been unbeatable in the ruck all day he and Simon Madden have given us not a lot of drive from that part high kick Duckworth knocks it away from his opponent and the ball booted up towards the centre wing position Wigney racing for it good block by Salmon to keep Terry Wallace at bay but the ball I think had crossed the line anyway and so a throw in right on the centre wing position just under 21 minutes left in this match Cousins and Madden and the umpire's found a free kick which way your guess is as good as mine how can he determine yeah. who's well, the stronger there well he's saying he's holding on there so Madden kicks to half forward Manning Anderson Bigger guy got his hands on it. Oh, first. I thought Terry Denner had it first, but again, the umpire in the position. Now you can see the distance there in that wide shot. Let's watch it once more. Denner, yeah, looked like it, didn't it, in the replay? So Stephen Clark, the chance to put Essendon nine points ahead. Not too many goals have been scored here at Footscray today, but that is one. Cullen keeps his footing pretty well too. Baxter out the back, Royal. Royal's kicked a full forward. No mark. Now the Footscray small men pulled off it. O'Donnell there for Essendon. Hamilton now. Hand pass over the top. Watson gets a sweeping hand pass to Bailey. Bailey to O'Donnell and Essendon with a little bit of composure get out of trouble. Back into the centre. Long can't mark. Pretty good play though by that casual ex-Darwin star Michael Long. Here goes Spawn. Spawn to full forward. Can Plane pick up his feet? No. Still at full forward for the Bombers. Hogg handballs it underground for the safety of the boundary line and will have a throw in. 3-8 plays 2-5. Sorry Andrew, Spawn was running through there. Andrew Manning put on a great shepherd, great team play. And the Footscray can see the goal here. Essendon might be just about home. Terry Danaher, grab, loses possession. Royal, Eppleston, kick from a standing start up towards midfield. Salmon again too tall. Might have been paid the mark there. Perhaps unlucky not to be. He's got a second chance, but well tackled by Kennedy. Bailey's not Bailey, but uh, Wallace has dragged off it for Essendon. It's a scramble. Foster almost tripped up, and in fact has been. He comes out with a free kick, plays on. As it turned out foolishly, Kennedy hooks the ball back and we'll see Michael Long gain possession Long to right half forward flank strong mark taken by Clark no doubt about that one yeah, it's a good effort by Hogg to spoil but even better effort by Clark to mark centering kick chipping in well Terry Wallace to mark Terry Wallace at half back Footscray needing a goal. Foster's tap down. Picked up by Hannibal. He'll kick it out of bounds on the full though. Now touched off the boot. Walsh. So we'll see a throw in on centre wing. Footscray didn't score a goal in the first quarter. They got one in the second and one in the third. Essendon was held goal uh, goalless in the third term. They added only three behinds. Ground here very heavy after the overnight rain Salmon and Kennedy again Salmon too tall down to Ford though roved it well Watson collided with Hamilton to this Kellett yeah, pretty crude tackle there by Kellett 
Hamilton will get the obvious free kick. He really has been very steady today, Paul Hamilton. Looks for Danaher, can't find him. Good mark to Eppleston. Eppleston taking the grab at left half back, but Footscray breaking down across the half forward line, and that has been the case most of the day. Kennedy got a couple of hands to it, finally picked up by Watson, runs into Brian Royal, turned into trouble, doesn't often do that. Baxter to Terry Wallace. Wallace's kick up towards the 50 metre line again, and once more Footscray outnumbered. Some good weight being used there by Hawkins. Cullen, can he finally pick it up? The hand pass. A wild one comes out to Hawkins. He gets it back to Cullen. Cullen's left footer, well delivered. It's uh, taken by Foster after the hand pass came from Kellett. And to see Danaher take the mark on the last line of defence. Great kick around the corner by Cullen. Anthony Danaher kicks it straight down the centre. Great mark from behind by Ford. And Footscray will go back into attack. Michael Ford. 11 kicks and four hand passes. Anyone that gets a kick on that man certainly earns it. Pass is good. O'Keefe. It was a very good pass, but an excellent mark by O'Keefe. He's been leading most of the afternoon and he's been on the ground, giving him something to kick two. Has, has had many touches, but he's at least giving him something to kick two. So O'Keefe shot directly in front about little under 40 metres gets under it slews off the side into the pocket Footscray mark no play on Anderson tackled by Hawkins Hamilton tackled O'Donnell tackled McGuinness in number 51 Kennedy for Footscray and the ball held in there by Anderson so we'll have a ball up in the right forward pocket for Footscray they desperately need to kick this next goal. They trail by nine points. And it really has been a struggle here at the Western Oval this afternoon. In very difficult conditions. A slight breeze blowing across the ground. Perhaps favouring the end to which Footscray are kicking. Rick Kennedy and Paul Salmon. Salmon, 20 possessions. His ruck work has been very, very good. Baxter. Royal can't gather the football. We'll have another boundary throw in. It's one of the better games I've seen Paul Salmon play in. Yeah. Really mobile and put himself in the right position. The Footscray coaches box there. Mickey Malthouse and Ray Walker on his left-hand side. On your right as the pitcher shows it. Hawkins kick into the pocket. And there's that man Hamilton again. I'd say heat figure in the 3-2 and 1s. O'Donnell runs across the goal square. A little bit risky, but his kick is pretty good. And it finishes up with Anthony Danaher at half back the kick off the side bounces in the field of play over for another boundary throw in and bulldogs really struggling up forward perhaps a little bit of a risk needed in these last few minutes to try and get the ball to the advantage of one of their forwards the ball towards center half forward duckworth hand pass to bailey bailey for the bombers anderson good mark plays on Caught by Hawkins, but gets his foot to the ball. Good play by Clark, intelligent stuff. Kick off the ground by Plain. Gathered by Whitney was good play by the Footscray defender. Steve Wallace, off to Ford. Ford is dumped after he kicks the ball, and umpire Luckman just looks at it. Hawkins, short pass, and you wouldn't believe it, that man Hamilton again takes the mark at half-back for Essendon. Hamilton. But short of half back, favours the member stand side again. Walsh, Foster, somebody's got the mark. What was at the back? Gotta be the Foster, man in front. Foster's mark. Great player, this fellow. I must admit, I've got the greatest admiration for Peter Foster. His courage and commitment each week, tremendous stuff. High kick. Not ideal for forwards to try to mark. Cullen overruns it. Back it comes to uh, Baxter from Royal. Oh, it's the oh, first time they played all day. Unbelievable, isn't it? That, and that, was the least, that was the least significant one of the whole lot that have gone on all day. <laughs> We've seen oh, a lot of well them. Well spoken, Ross. Well Excuse done. me. Unbelievable. That's uh, Wallace, Dean Wallace. Yeah, he's in a bit of bother there. Yes. yes. Grenfell preparing to come back on. May have a bit of cramp. Yes. Is it a bit more severe than that? He's running off, so it can't be too bad. Cullen from 50.
great kick the difference in favour of Essendon Salmon but Terry Wallace robes it beautifully to him Cousins short kick out of the circle Walsh off the ground Eppleston puts Gray maybe with a sniff of victory Hawkins gives it back to him again and down to half forward Mark taken by Foster short kick tried to find O'Keefe but couldn't do so Anthony Danaher chipping in well to take the mark just up from the back pocket plane so coming off and Werner going back on Bombers under pressure Anthony Danaher's kick marked by Hannaberry clean mark outside 50 Hannaberry who kicks the ball pretty well torpedo punt kick to full forward no mark and Anthony Danaher again repels the Footscray forward thrust kick in towards the centre desperate stuff Hawkins intelligent over the top to Hunter Hunter's kick into the pocket McGuinness great mark by That's McGuinness a... running with the flight of the ball terrific mark plays on quickly kicks it to within goal scoring distance for the Bulldogs Anthony Danaher again if it's not a mark it's certainly a free kick it's Salmon rather is it or yeah that was a mark yes Salmon Salmon at uh, half back for Essendon the advantage of being a big man the short kick into the woods of centre it's actually at centre half back now taken by Long Long looking for Hamilton good interception by Hunter kick off the ground now the Bombers have got a chance Cullen just might get Hamilton he does ball to spawn he's caught handball goes out the back Manning caught Holding the ball. Gee whiz, well done by the Footscray players. They were nowhere near in the hunt then. They just kept persisting. They've now got the football. Hunter on centre wing. Short pass. Ford can run with it. Elects to do so. Kicks it towards Foster. Can't mark. Greenville got with the ball. No, around the next is the umpire. Essendon a little fortunate. Greenville's kick at the right half back flank. Well, he's really gone for the boundary line with that one. And the mark is taken for Essendon by Kieran Spawn. Manning off, plane back on. Wobbly kick, travels just 30 metres. Clark to Watson. Clark drag. Watson continues, sets it up for Long. Didn't bounce too kindly for him, but great skills, this fellow. Looping hand pass. Back to Simon Madden. Wallace, it's Steve Wallace. Good punch away from Werner. The two number 24s. Werner just back onto the ground. Ball very close to the boundary line. Danaher, Terry Danaher's kick. Cousins tackles Watson. Plain. Left foot snap shot. Is it goal? Well, he's had a very, very good tussle with Steve Wallace all day. Wallace, I think, had the better. Plain's not had a great influence on the game, but the move to bring him straight back on just a few seconds ago. Vindicated by Plain with that good goal. The kick coming back intelligently from Terry Danaher. And a good effort to get that ball by Watson, committed himself, got the ball to his teammate Plain, who kicked a vital goal. Salmon, Long, Clark and Plain, the goal kickers for Essendon, Hawkins, Cullen and O'Keefe for Footscray. The Bombers now with a handy lead at the Western Oval, 3-5 to 4-8. And a big punch there by Salmon towards half forward, gathered by Eppleston, just gets his left foot to the ball, and as he does so, he's down. So the free kick will go back to the Footscray defender, and... He looks a little sore. As he's met fairly solidly and high by Simon Madden. And the free kick now going to his teammate Baxter. They'll have to go fairly direct, although if they avoid the mud heap in the centre, surely that will be an advantage. The ball finishes with McGuinness. McGuinness has kicked to half forward, and the mark has been taken by Bailey for the Bombers. Bailey goes wide. Wallace chips in in front of Long on the bottom of it Grenvold and he comes out with the ball that the umpire has elected to ball it up between wing and half forward for Footscray Michael Roberts has a report on the boundary line and the injured players yes Dean Wallace was taken off with cramp in his left calf but uh, I would say that he's going to be all right and uh, he could take his place on the field again thank you Michael Terry Danaher kicks to half forward for Essendon Klein chased by Hogg once again, the left footer, marked by Clark, this time inside 50. And the Bombers finishing off. Long, Madden. Madden boot to ball quickly, but misses to the far side and one behind. And he just gave an apologetic look to Michael Long. Yeah. 
He has got a free kick, yes. The option free kick. of another kick. And that poking out of the tongue by Simon Madden, I think would indicate I lucky. was a little fortunate. I think so. You can see it here on replay there. There's like a long coming from the right there, but Wigney just pushing Madden in the back as he kicked the ball. And because it wasn't a goal, he has another chance. Remember Malcolm Blight at North Melbourne years ago had another chance. He'd already <laughs> kicked a point and then he kicked it out of bounds. But this ground isn't quite as bad as Arden Street. And in fact, Madden goals to seal it for the Bombers. Yes, but it's going to make it hard for Footscray to come back with the limited number of goals being scored in this game. They've been at a premium, so you wouldn't expect too many quick replies. That's certainly what Footscray will have to do to get back. To see this again on replay, definitely pushing the back from Wigney. Probably conceded that Madden was actually going to kick a goal. Madden's first goal. And the Essendon's fifth. Now 15 points the difference at the Western Oval and Essendon looking pretty safe as it's uh, thumped away by Salmon once more but it's going to be a footscray free to Brian Royal. Royal on the defensive side of the centre circle kicks the Bulldogs out towards half forward. Little push in the back. Umpire saw it. Yes, Dougie, it's against you if you see the replay. It's definitely a free kick. Very upset as Doug Hawkins. Anderson's kick back in towards that glue pot. Look at that muddy centre here at the Western Oval. Absolutely atrocious in there. I wonder if umpire Luckman got the message from Doug Hawkins there. It certainly <laughs> was delivered vehemently by Dougie Hawkins. Over the top cousins. Duckworth. Terry Wallace just gets his foot to it. Kick by Watson up towards half forward. No mark. Spawn. Good contest between Kieran Spawn and Mark Hunter there at centre half forward for Essendon. And umpire Carey will come in and ball it up. There's just over six minutes left in the match. And Essendon, with its greatest advantage so far, they lead by 15 points. Ball back in the centre. Duckworth. Oh, pulled off it there. It was Hawkins. Now Salmon. Left foot kick to half forward. A good mark taken by Cousins in front of Foles. Eight marks to Cousins. And pretty well also. Cousins left foot kick into the centre. And a very good mark taken by Duckworth. The football covered in mud. Out wide. Gather by Spawn is brilliant. Off to Long. Just a little bit of pace to get away. And out wide the mark is taken by Werner. Hand pass over the top plane. Goal coming up to Essendon. Madden kicks his second. And just wide of the circle. Bounce again. Cousins knocks it down. Watson. Eppleston went for the tap on. Oh, kicked off the ground by Hunter. Out to Michael Long. Gets away from Hanabry. Shoots in the short pass. Werner takes the grab. Outside 50. Plenty of options down there. Madden had it knocked away by Wigney. And Wigney goes for a further tap away. Didn't succeed in getting it too far. Folds grab. Might have been a little bit too high. Play on, says the umpire. Werner does. Wobbly left footer. Terry Danaher in front. Roving it well. Plain. Terry Danaher again. Madden, can he make it three goals for the turn? Up towards the edge of the square. And it will be a ball up. Simon having a bit of trouble with the right foot there, Russ. Yeah, he's trying to kick it around the corner. <laughs> you kick on his right foot early in the game. I haven't seen that for a long time. Cousins knocks it down. Tackled by Folds. And that is one behind. Some further point to the Bombers total. Under four minutes left. 6-9 to 3-5. So a difference of 22 points. As Bradley Plain looks slightly the worse for wear. Played a good game today. Of the best on ground honours last week. Walsh knocks the ball down. Watson, Salmon, who kicked first goal of the game and did it brilliantly at the other end, and that's a fine mark taken by Michael Ford, who's short of the centre half back post. So it was a little casual there. Nearly played on, and Simon Madden was only a metre away. He's kick out towards the wing. Duckworth, short pass into the muddy centre, looking for Watson. He slips over. But he's able to get the hand pass back to the big fellow Salmon. And Salmon's intelligent short pass finds Anderson. So Bombers just showing a little bit of composure in the dying minutes. Won't have any trouble hanging on now, I wouldn't think. Anderson's kick finds Grenvold. 
he's still outside 50 metres so Grinvold will put Essendon up towards the full forward area the drop punt kick falls in short Essendon mark Terry Danaher pretty straightforward stuff for the veteran here at Essendon and Terry Danaher has only kicked one behind yeah, he's just read that well he's had a good battle with uh, Eppleston Eppleston hasn't done too badly Terry Danaher has taken six marks and had 16 kicks, five hand passes. Going for his first goal, the breeze, stopping the ball. Dean Wallace, Madden kicks his third. Yeah, third in this quarter, in the vital quarter. Having kicked five goals last week for Essendon, asserting his authority in the game, but he's had a quieter game today with Paul Seaman dominating around the ground and in the ruck, which has been a good thing for Essendon, particularly the finals coming up to allow Salmon some greater workload. And he's responded to that challenge very well, allowing Madden to sit up in that forward line and contribute with three vital goals. And he's pretty happy. So well he might be. Back into the centre. Three goals to Simon Madden. Watson kicks the ball down there again. And here come the Bombers as Wallace. It's a to Long. It's Dean Wallace. Up to half forward, knocked away by Eppleston. Plain off the ground, out of bounds, 45 metres out, right half forward flank for the Bombers, with less than two minutes remaining in this match. Footscray score, Pete, of 3-5-23, is equal to their lowest ever, which they kicked earlier this season against Essendon up at Windy Hill. Yes, they haven't had uh, some high scoring matches against Essendon in recent years. And the umpire Carey has found a free kick. And it's going to O'Donnell. And as McGinnis stands the mark. Kick really, I guess, of academic interest, except percentage. Heston has the game well and truly in its keeping. He's not going to goal with that kick. In fact, it won't even be a score. Cousins takes the mark. Over to Ford. McGinnis. Grabbed well by O'Donnell close to the boundary line Werner O'Donnell again did well to get a kick at it and Madden almost hog grab when not in position and will take the free kick and assisted it looks like by another 50 meters that makes number nine for the day and I don't have records on such but I would imagine that would just about be a record it's very high particularly at the last few weeks we've really seen one or two if any at all Ross that's right Kick drop short, long, takes the easiest of marks he'll probably get all season. Watson looked at the umpire before he kicked it and then delivers it well to Anderson, who kicks straight into Eppleston, but Anderson might get a second chance. Has to fire out a hurried hand pass. Terry Danaher, a little nine iron chip shot, finds O'Donnell. And Donald left half forward flank, plays on. Nesson certainly finishing the fresher, and Clark takes a good mark right on the 50 metre line. So less than half a minute remaining. Can Clark get another goal? Well, what I admire about Stephen Clark is he takes quite a few steps running at the football. He's a little uh, undecided. Now he goes for the short pass and finds Terry Danaher. And still, I think Essendon difficult to score. But Terry Danaher, the siren has sounded. Essendon will win the margin yet to be determined. Danaher having a shot. I doubt whether he'll get the distance. It's dropping in short. And that's the final score. Essendon win by 28 points. Today's game is part of final the margin and the Bulldogs in season 89 stuck on three goals, 5-23 when it comes to playing Essendon.